Welcome to Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast, where as your host each and every week, I am going to inspire you and empower you to share your message and step into that big vision you see for yourself. I'll be bringing you celebrity interviews, influencer insights, and my personal tips from decades as an on-camera talent, TV host, media expert, and entrepreneur, so you can build a brilliant seven-figure brand. Because when you're inspired, you inspire others. So let's go. Hello, welcome back to the show. It is Carrie Murphy, and oh my gosh, I am so excited to bring you my girlfriend, Kelly Roach. This woman is one of those women in business you must follow because she is having million dollar months and growing her business at a time where most of us are closing our business or downsizing, right? This global pandemic has really changed things up, but Kelly has figured it out. And in this episode, she is sharing so many truth bombs it could truly change your life. (laughs) I mean, it really could. It could change your life. She is the CEO of the Unstoppable Entrepreneur Company. She also has a company she started called Give Her Courage. She's a best-selling author. She is seen in media outlets across the country. And more importantly, she has an incredible heart to serve women and, and men in business to grow and scale their businesses, to create the lifestyle that you really desire and see for yourself. Get a pen and paper because this episode just might change your life. Hello, Miss Kelly Roach. Hey, hey. I'm so happy happy that you're with me today because, girl, you inspire me truly every day. You inspire me. I'm just trying (laughs) to learn how to do my makeup. I'm so glad I have you in my life because I need training. As I said, this is what friends are for, right? You help me, I help you. It's all reciprocity. (laughs) <laughs> Women need to support each other, Carrie. Yes. We have to come together. We right? really do. <laughs> we really do. Which we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Kelly, gosh, you know, we could talk so much about your career and your business and what you've accomplished in your life. But I want to go back. I want to go back to when you weren't Kelly Roach as you yeah. are today, right? With the unstoppable entrepreneur and what you've grown with Give Her Courage and, and what you continue to grow with your business. But you actually had a really successful corporate career. And I feel a lot of people jump ship from corporate and yeah. move over to entrepreneur land. And how was that for you? And what was it that made you abort ship? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I spent almost a decade building my corporate career. I climbed the ladder really, really quickly. I was first one in, last one out every single day. I was the girl that went to work every day, full suit, full hair and makeup. You would appreciate this. I was like ready to be the CEO of the company when I was like 21. And in my 20s, I actually became the youngest senior vice president of the company. So I was leading a team of 100 people. I was managing 17 different business units, 17 different locations around the US. And I learned so much. I value my time there. It's so funny because I, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make actually, Carrie. And I'm sure you see this with your community too. They discount their past experience. Oh my god! They're gosh, like, "Well, I hated that job. I hated that experience. That wasn't my dream." You know, blah blah blah. But I think it's. I think that's actually one of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make because in discounting that, you lose the value of everything that you had to learn through to become who you are today. I was Kelly Overton then. I was not married. I was single. I was just trying to figure out my way in the world. But that's where I learned leadership and coaching and sales and marketing and business strategy, right? I couldn't be who I am today without that experience. But I just got to the point where Billy and I were like, okay, we want to get married. We want to have a family. We want to travel the world together. We have all these big dreams. And you can't do that working 60, 80 hours a week, whatever, in a corporate environment where you're on planes and trains and buses all the time. And I was like, you know, what do I really love and how do I think I can really make a difference? And I knew that statistic of, you know, 85 to 90% of small businesses fail. Yeah, and I was like, like, you know, it's crazy because these are the hardest working people on the planet. That's right. Right? If you're going to work in 80 hours, you might as well work for yourself, right? Exactly. But it's a very different. Exactly. Thing. But I, I think most people that start their own businesses are really good at the thing that they think they're starting a business in. And what they don't recognize is that being a business owner, being a CEO is, you know, 85% leadership, operations, strategy, you know, all the other things. And then that little tiny percent, you're doing the thing that you do. Like I run a coaching company. I coach maybe three hours a week. The rest of my working hours are running the business, right? So 
I I wanted to bring sales and marketing to the space so that more people that start their dream as a small business owner get to complete their dream as a small business owner and actually have the tools to do it. Yeah. I love the passion we both have in helping entrepreneurs grow and flourish and create impactful, inspiring brands, brands that create wealth, brands that give back, brands that allow them to have the freedom that they actually went into business for. But I want to scooch back just a little bit because when we were talking about discounting our past, I really want to talk about that for a minute because one of the things I hear so much with the entrepreneurs that I work with, and I'm sure you do too, Kelly, is this imposter syndrome. Like, I'm not ready to put myself on camera. I'm not ready to share. I'm not ready to do this bigger thing because I don't have the experience, but they forget, right? Like what got you where you are is everything that you've done in your past. And I think we have to just remember that, that you get to crown yourself the expert based upon your experience. And please be in integrity with that, right? Like bring the skill set. But I find that that is something I hear so much is this imposter syndrome. Yeah, no, I'm really happy. And, And that's what I was alluding to. I think most people think that when they start a new business, they're starting from zero. I hear this all the time. They're like, I'm starting over. I don't have any experience. I don't have any clients. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second. What did you just do for 20 years? Okay, no, you have all of the experience. You have all of the testimonials. I tell people, even when you're starting a new program, if you need to bring in character witnesses Mm -hmm. from other walks of life, of other projects that you've done, of other careers that you've had, that's absolutely fine to say, this is a brand new program. You're the first person that I'm inviting to work with me in this program, but let me introduce you to Carrie, who I led and taught sales and coaching to, you know, for 15 years or whatever. And she accomplished ABC and XYZ, right? I think we need to change that mindset. And especially you ladies, the women, that when you start a business, you're starting from zero. You're not starting from zero. You're starting from decades sometimes of knowledge, wisdom, experience that you're now simply applying in a new way. So I really love that you brought that up, Carrie. So good because you know what? I think no matter where you are in business, there's always a little part of you when you have this big dream and you have this big vision of like, why me? And I hear so much like, why should I be on camera? There's a bazillion other people who are doing the same thing, you know? And I love you so much because I remember sitting around this table with other seven and eight figure women business owners, which we need more of in the world. I know we're yes. both passionate about that. You. And you said something to me and I chuckled. And at first I was like, what is she talking about? And now since I've applied this, it has really changed my business. And that is your motto of training like an athlete. And I remember yes. like, I'm a cheerleader. I've been a cheerleader my whole life, you know, and yet you have this mantra, you have this way of running your company that again, I find very inspiring and like, holy crap, I better get my sh- together because Kelly Roach says train like an athlete. What do you mean by that in business? Yeah, I, I think first of all, it's having a commitment to mastery. And I think that as social media has become a bigger and bigger part of our lives, we are so trained to seek instant gratification that we no longer seek the fulfillment. Wait, wait, we seek instant gratification. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. I know these are crazy concepts, (laughs) but yeah. So, so one it's mastery. I see a lot of people get really frustrated and overwhelmed and want to quit their businesses or pivot their businesses constantly because they don't feel like they're getting paid what they're worth for the time that they're putting in. And they feel like they should be further along than they are. And they're not satisfied with how quickly things are moving. And the idea of training for your business like an athlete trains for your sport is really all about, number one, committing to never-ending improvement. It's really believing in the mission and the vision that you say that you're here to create in the world, which is not about what have you done for me lately, but what is, what is your lifetime body of work? What is the legacy that you're leaving? And how do you treat every day as an opportunity to learn and grow and improve and develop more mastery? of being the CEO of your business and also the leader to your market and to your clients, right? That's one piece of it. The other piece of it is running drills. So biggest mistake hands down that keeps entrepreneurs broke, stuck, overwhelmed, stressed out, burnt out is just the the constant entrepreneurial ADD. And it's an impatience Mm -hmm. and it's getting bored and constantly wanting to change things. Okay. I I really want to make sure you're listening to this invaluable advice right? It's like master something. I say shift from generalist to specialist, like get known, get really good at something. And then 
you're talking, Kelly, about like being consistent, right? Like not aborting ship, bright, shiny object syndrome that most entrepreneurs, you know, really suffer from. And then they're saying, why aren't I getting results? Exactly. And I'll, I'll give the perfect example. Um, you know, we were chatting the other day on the millionaires call and we were talking about, um, you know, changing focus, you know, for launches. And, and I was sharing with the group, I've been doing the same launch every six to eight weeks for two and a half years. Okay, Carrie, you I, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Same content. Same content. Same content. Same content. I went from Carrie doing launches, and you know this because you know my story, where I was losing money or breaking even, literally spending a month and thousands of dollars to maybe get, I don't know, seven sales tops, right? We had our a million dollar month last month in our business. Uh-huh. And it is because we committed to the follow through and the execution of the fundamentals over and over again. Everyone always wants to know what the magic secret is. What's the magic secret? What, what's that special thing that you're doing? I'm like, nope. I'm like, we're just so committed to the execution of the fundamentals over and over and over again. It's not the market that gets bored, everybody. Listen to what I'm saying. It's not the market that's getting bored. It's you, right? And when you commit to following through your whole life, your whole business, everything changes. Right. Okay, this podcast just might have changed your entire life because what Kelly is dropping here is truth bombs galore that we learn 10 years into our business, eight years into our business, where when you're starting out and you're starting to grow, if you would just take this advice, like yeah. be consistent, master a skill, don't abort ship too early you know, and stop taking advice from every single person on the planet, like find your coach, yes. find your tribe, right. And stick with something. Cause I think also what happens Kelly with social media is there's all these trainings and launches and classes. Yes. And I can't tell you how many times I hear, you know, someone said, Oh, well, I just invested in this and it didn't bring me anything. Or you know what? I've made a bad choice over here. And I'm like, well, all choices lead to a choice that gets you to where you are, you know, but it is that there's just so much out there. There's so many options for people. Yeah. And what I would say to everyone that's listening to the show today is there's one thing in business right now that supersedes everything else in importance. And you found your mentor, Carrie Murphy, because on camera presence and consistency being on camera is the hinge point of every aspect of how you need to be focused on building your business, whether it's on a podcast, whether it's on a live stream, whether it's, uh, you know, you have your own TV show like Carrie does, right? So, you know, I would say for everybody listening today, this really needs to be the only podcast that you listen to because if you haven't yet mastered on-camera presence and conversion, then you're kind of building a house without a foundation, right? And that's why I think you and I always connected so much because I'm like, yes, Carrie gets it. She understands like, this is one of those fundamental building blocks that no entrepreneur can be without. And yet it's something that they're so scared of. And, I'm, and I constantly say, and Kelly, you are such an incredible example of this, is that being on camera is not about you. It's yeah. not about you. It's about you showing up to yes. serve your tribe and help your tribe. And trust me, we all have bad hair days, days that we don't want to be on camera, days we don't feel good. And yeah. yet, Kelly, you are resilient. You show up consistently in your business. And I tell you, I'm always admiring what I see. And I know what I see is just a glimpse because you're not on camera as much as people think you are, right? You have teams, yeah. systems, and which we're going to talk about at the Brilliant event when you come, which I'm so yes. excited about because in a time right now, Kelly, where people are closing their businesses, they are downsizing team. You just had a million dollar month. I just want to make sure everyone heard that. And you are up to what, 23 employees as of today, which could very well change tomorrow. You know, can you please share with us? Is it because you've just been consistent and you're feeding that beast, that funnel? And why are you having this incredible amount of growth when so many businesses are struggling? Yeah. I mean, the number one thing, Carrie, is embracing imperfect action, you know, and I can't stress that enough for everyone. It's embracing imperfect action is not like this fluffy platitude. Right. I know everybody says like imperfect action and it feels like it's like, like almost like a marketing terminology now, but it's exactly what you said, Carrie. It is such a commitment to follow through that you do it on the bad hair days. You do it. You know, I've had launches where Madison's running in and out and climbing on me and I keep going. 
Whatever right, right. it is, I keep going. I have parents going around. You know, I've had parents in the hospital and I'm on the phone closing clients on the way. It's what it is, is it's getting so anchored to, again, your body of work, the legacy that you're building, your commitment to your family. I'm a family first girl. You don't see me out there driving around in a Ferrari, but you'll see me, you know, at the playground with my daughter. That's what matters to me, right? I'm building our future as a family. I know you're very much the same way, Carrie, but for us, we've committed to the fundamentals and we've followed through. We've stayed focused on imperfect action and we've not worried about what anyone else is doing. And that I think is the number one thing above all else. About two years ago, Carrie, I unsubscribed from every competitor's email list. I stopped consuming online content. I really said like at this moment in my career, I cannot be influenced by anyone else in my space. I cannot have my perspective shifted or care or have concern about what my competitors are doing and really one of the best decisions I ever made. Kelly, I just, I cannot love you enough. Like, <laughs> I'm just like I just want to scream yes, because people ask me all the time, you know, well, you know, what do you think about this person? Or have you looked at this coach? Or have you heard what this person's doing? And I'm like, no, I have no idea. Right. I do. The same thing happens to you. Yeah. Like, I don't know anything because I'm so focused on what we're doing. I don't have time to be looking at what everyone else is doing, looking at their emails, that comparison critic. I, I don't have time to talk to her. And it's, yes. this is vital, especially when you're growing and you're committed to scaling. Like stop, stop looking at what everyone else is doing and stop comparing yourself to false metrics, you know, on Instagram and Facebook and stay in your lane, stay committed yeah. to serving people. And it just, yeah. oh, I love it so much because we can get so wrapped up in that comparison critic analysis paralysis that, you know, well, I'm not doing this. I don't have this. That's and we all start with just us, right? Yeah. I mean, I remember starting out doing videos 10 years ago and they were crap. Like, oh my God, horrible. Oh was- my gosh. My husband, literally my husband who loves me more than life would say to me, you're going to put that out. And I would be like, yeah, I'm going to put that out. I just spent three hours on this two minute tip. I'm putting that out. <laughs> Like, I just recorded this bad boy like 17 times. Like I'm done. Like, this is going it's out. Right. Yes. It's oh, not no. getting any better. Like I just wasn't good on camera. Like it wasn't the recording was bad. Like it just wasn't, I wasn't there. Yes. That, but it's, that, all, it's all that, an evolution. That, yes. Everything. Let's talk about Billy for a minute because you've actually, on a personal note, you've been able to retire your husband. Yes. And yes. to say that is really special. And you know, I know that brings up a lot of stuff for people. How does that work? How does your dynamic work? How does he yeah. feel fulfilled in his role as dad and husband when you're the one who is really bringing home the bacon? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, it was the best decision ever. It was a decision, actually, we made the decision that when we were dating, so we've been together almost 15 years. When we started dating, we decided that we didn't want to put our kids in daycare. So we didn't know at the time whether it was going to end up being me home or him home, but we both agreed that someone would be home. And in that span from the time that we were dating to the time that we ended up getting married and then started planning to have a family, the business obviously, you know, was growing and growing. And so it just made sense. And it's really been the best decision of our lives. I mean, the freedom that we have as a family, because you have to think about it as an entrepreneur, even if you build this wildly successful business but your spouse has to go to work every day. What's the point? Like you want to enjoy that time with them. Like that was our whole goal. And so for us, that's been everything, you know, he's like a family, family guy. He's been, you know, home with Madison since she was born, but he's also a musician, just like your hubby. He's a musician. And when we met, he was out playing shows every weekend. He was on radio stations. He was opening for national acts. He was doing all this stuff. He took a step back for the last six years with music, focused on Madison. Madison's back in school now. He literally just started. I just got him to start an Instagram page. Carrie. Oh, that's so fantastic. I so, would love yes. Yeah. So now we're going to enjoy that journey together. And I'm going to get to be a part of like helping him like, you know, awaken his passion again and, and refocus on it now that there's a little bit more time and space. But, you know, for anyone listening, you know, if, if you've had that pull, I would say absolutely it's the best family decision you will ever make. It's, it's for us, especially going through like the pandemic this year and everything, the amount of stress that it relieved for us to be able to like have him home full time and pull Madison out. Like, you know, there's just, there's been, there's been so much, right? There's just so much. 
so much. It's been quite the year. And it's, it's really a beautiful thing. And I love that it's somewhat unconventional. And yet I know so many successful women entrepreneurs where their husbands are either coming to work with them yeah. or they're staying home. Like, here's the thing. We get to create the life that we want. One of my best friends, she sold her home and her and her husband, they're both entrepreneurs. They took their two boys and they're nomads. They just travel the world. And it was like, it was so unconventional. Who does this? And she's like, we chose to do something different with our life. I think we get very stuck in what society says is okay, what is appropriate. You know, the whole point of having a business is freedom. Exactly. And yet many of us own a job instead of a company. And it's this shift that you're talking about in, you know, training like an athlete, doing the sprints, being consistent on camera, in your message and who you are. And it's not an overnight success. It's not. No one will tell you who's built a brand. You know, it really is a marathon, but you have to be consistently running for you to get to the destination. (laughs) You know, you have to keep going. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. And, and, you know, I can say like for us, like, you know, I started my business in 2012 and we really built the business initially with one-to-one consultations. We started off doing social selling on LinkedIn. We hadn't figured out, you know, the launch process yet. It took us a very long time to figure that out. And, you know, finally we did with the live launch and all of that. But, you know, now we're at a point where like, you know, I just did my schedule for the new year. I'm taking a week off each month. I have two companies, so I only work three days a week in the coaching company. And I have a leadership team and I have staff, so I I can do that and the business will still grow. It's no longer me, right? There's a separation between me and the company. And, you know, it is possible. And I just want to remind everybody of that because in the beginning, when it's just, you're just grinding and it's a grind. And trust me, I haven't forgotten because I have a new business, right? I have a new business and I'm in that grind with the new business, but I just want to let everyone know that's listening. Like there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It probably will take you a little longer than the idea and vision that you had in your mind. It's like building a house or designing a home. It always takes longer. (laughs) That's right. But it's worth it. I would do it over again, a hundred thousand times. I would never choose a different path and you'll get there. The only thing that takes you out of the game is quitting, right? The only thing that takes you out of the game. You know what, Kelly, I hand select the five to six speakers I bring to Brilliant every year. And I'm always like, gosh, who do people need? What is it going to be? Because there's so many people that have great advice and businesses out there that they've grown. And I invited you this year and I invited you for a couple of reasons. One, again, everything that you've said today, how you show up in this space, how you show up as a leader, the fact that you have built an eight figure business, you're having million dollar months, and yet you still remember the grind. You know, you're still like, hey, What I love so much about you is like, how can I help? Like, ask me anything. Like, what do you need? And you're you're just, you you come from that abundance mindset. And I think as women, sometimes when we reach a certain level of success, we're like, oh, well, I don't want to share my secrets. I don't want people to know. And that's why I invited you to Brilliant because our speakers are like, let me tell you exactly what I'm doing. It's getting me this result. And right now you have conquered, crushed this live launch thing that you've just written a book about, you're going to be talking about. We adapted it right before the pandemic. And I am telling you, Kelly, from someone who was like, we were so in growth mode. We were really busy doing our in-person events. If we had not implemented this and you're like, Carrie, you have to do it. And here I am, someone who's on camera all the time and I resist it. Yes. Yes. And here I am, like we do six figure launches. We're going to get to that seven. Will you share with us a little bit about what that is and what we can expect to learn from you at Brilliant this year? Yeah, definitely. And, and thank you. And I'm so excited to get to be a part of Brilliant because I know the people that you attract and the amazing, incredible community that you've built. And it's, it's going to be magic. So I'm so excited to be a part of it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I'm going to really dig in and actually teach you guys the live launch model. And you know what I always say, and I say this to my team every day, I'm like, I just want to remind you all that our clients are coming in in one month and they're generating six and multiple six-figure launches. It took us over five years of launching to get to our first six-figure launch. So literally that is the power of the model that we're teaching. And, you know, gosh, I wish I had had this right when I was getting started, right? Because I did it the hard way, but now we have that formula. And that's why, like you said, Carrie, I'm just, I just want to stream it from the rooftops and just teach people how to do it. But it's really, 
It's understanding the power of bringing together and leveraging social media and combining that with on-camera presence, making a huge difference, serving, and just giving a massively simplified way to get your message out to the world in a way that gives people what they need to say yes and make a buying decision very, very quickly, even if they've never heard of you before, even though they're just discovering you for the first time. And the process is fun. It's fun. It's fun and it's it's a high. Like my team and I were just like, it feels so good because people are excited. You know, and in a time right now, whether we're going through a pandemic or not, I know for me, like I need it too. Like the connection I feel with my community through live launch, just, it makes me feel so good. Like we're all just, it's like that buzz, the adrenaline rush. For sure. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to give a lot of specifics. You know, we're going to have, you know, probably 45 minutes or an hour together. So my goal is that anyone that attends Brilliant literally can leave the event and go do a live launch. And so for you guys that are thinking about getting a ticket, get your ticket because you're going to walk away with something that you can use to to bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars in your business. You're going to get the full breakdown live. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have fun doing it. And I know I'm just one of many incredible sessions and incredible people and, you know, great teachings that are going to be there. So. Yeah. Taking all these insightful, high-end, in-depth conversations that we have around a table and bringing them to other women. We need that. Like we were talking earlier, we need more women creating wealth. We need more women giving back to the world. And let's talk about giving back. Let's talk briefly about Give Her Courage. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I started Give Her Courage, I guess, two and a half years ago with my best friend of 20 years. She is a corporate leader and has been for many years in sales trainer. And we both really recognize that exactly what you just said, essentially, Carrie, there's not enough women that are sending the elevator back down for the next generation. And our goal in starting Give Her Courage is to really reach out to girls at that critical age. We know that between ages, you know, eight and nine, essentially, girls' confidence drops by like 85%. Literally, those formative years are really going to make or break her self-worth, her self-confidence, uh, her, her vision of what's possible for her. So our goal is to capture girls before that moment hits and instill courage and confidence in them in such a level that they just have these massive goals, massive dreams, big beliefs about themselves so that they can deal with the peer pressure and they can deal with the challenges of social media and they can navigate the bullying and all the insanity that these poor kids are being subject to. And we know we can't prevent it. It's going to happen. So what Amy and I are trying to do with Give Her Courage is equip our girls with the tools to be able to navigate it and overcome it since we know we can't prevent it. And it's going to allow these girls, when they see that going on over there, they're going to be like, I have such big dreams. I have such big goals. Like, I'm not getting involved in that. Like, you guys kill each other over there. I'll be over here. Right? (laughs) Down down over there. I'm going over. Exactly. You guys do your thing. And so, you know, it's incredible. So we run an academy and it's called the Courage Academy. And it's really designed to teach girls all of these principles around self-worth, self-confidence, leadership, effective communication, being on camera, all of these things. And then of course we have the fun part, which is we have a retail store. We have a retail line with some really fun, cute, trendy stuff that just gives people an opportunity to wear something that has a message of courage and power. Again, coming back to this idea of women empowering women women lifting each other up. And that's really the message that we're trying to get out in the world. Uh, I love it so much. I can't wait. We'll be sending Lauren through that as well. You know, it's like she's five and it's interesting because I I studied quantum physics and physics and NLP. And it was when I found out that, you know, between eight and 12, the critical factor in your brain is being developed. And that is when you start feeling self-doubt and lack of confidence and ego really comes in before that, before seven, that's not developed yet. So this program at this age can truly change the trajectory of some of these young girls' lives as this critical factor is being developed and they're starting to feel all those feels, you know, that I still remember as a kid. That's what we're hoping. That's the vision. And I think we need more strong women leaders, but we also need more women that are linking arms with other women. And, you know, the hope and the goal is that this really starts, you know, a movement and, and impacts the next generation significantly. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to help you with this movement as much as I can, Kelly. So tell me, what does inspired living mean to you? I think it's living in alignment, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's living in alignment. I think inspired living is living a life that you feel allows you to channel your passion, 
be who you really are. You know, use your gifts in a meaningful way and to do it without feeling like you have to fit in a certain box, you know, be a certain way, compare a certain way. I think it's really just being on purpose. Yes. Could not agree with you more, Kelly. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to have you at Brilliant this year, even though it's virtual. It will be just as amazing and transformational. We're going to link arms together and we're going to continue to help women grow and scale their businesses. If you want to join us this year, go get your ticket. Stop thinking about it. Go to thebrilliantevent.com. Come join Kelly and I and an incredible lineup of women who have built seven and eight-figure brands from the ground up through their passion, their tenacity, their drive, mistakes, right? We've all made them and great successes. So I really hope you will join us for Brilliant coming up September 13th through the 15th. Kelly, if I was to ask you, what is your number one piece of advice? What would it be? Ooh, I have have so many. I I would say, I would say just be the best that you can be in everything that you do. And I, I think that that means challenging yourself to do it scared, do it to overcome the imposter syndrome. Do it when you're not feeling courageous. Be the best that you can possibly be in everything that you do and answer the calling. Just answer the calling because you know, we all know inside of us, right? And it's just, it's, it's answering that calling and being true to who you know you're being called to be. Yep. You're not given a vision without a way to make it happen, right? So Kelly, love you. Thank you so, Thank you so, so much. much. And uh, we'll see you soon. You've just heard another uplifting episode of Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast. I hope you loved it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you'd like to know more about Inspired Living or to get your hands on many of our awesome free resources, such as the Be Studio Ready Guide, simply visit us at inspiredliving.tv forward slash podcast. Remember, your vision is your destiny, and we're here to help you bring it to life. Join me again next week for another extraordinary episode.